The church communion of today originates from the last supper that Jesus had with his disciples during the last Passover before his death on the cross. He broke bread and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. He gave wine to them, saying, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. This is why churches of the world eat bread and drink wine. By doing that, they think they truly believe in Jesus Christ and that they are eating and drinking in remembrance of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all of our sins. But is this the biblical truth? When Jesus said to eat and drink, did he mean the communion that has become an important ceremony in the church? It is written in John 6, verse 45 to 51. It is written in the prophet, and they shall all be taught of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also, which I will give for the life of the world, is my flesh. Jesus called himself the living bread that came down out of heaven and said that anyone who eats of this bread will live forever. So, in order to come to eternal life, the core of Christian salvation, you must eat of the living bread, Jesus Christ. Then, here is a question. Do you understand this word? Is the communion ceremony really eating and drinking of Jesus Christ and inheriting eternal life? Let us search the answer from the Bible by discerning spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. First, what does the living bread that came down out of heaven mean? Jesus Christ was in God's presence as a spirit. Then he came down to this earth through Mary's body 2,000 years ago. That was written in parable as coming down out of heaven. The living bread is a parable about how Jesus will die on the cross and physically come back to life on the third day. When you eat of the living bread, you will live forever means when you understand and believe the meaning of the words written in the Bible and carry them out, then you will come to eternal life without even physical death. However, the people back in the first coming did not understand what he meant in the parable and said in verse 52. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Because Jesus spoke in parables, the Jews back then did not understand and argue with each other. In John 6, from verse 53 to 58, so Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. Even though Jesus said this, no one for 2,000 years has ever lived without physically dying. Only Jesus alone physically died and came back to life in an eternal body that will never die. And he has been at the right hand of God for 2,000 years. So people do not believe in eternal life. Not only that, 
they don't even realize that eternal life is living forever without physically dying. They did not understand because Jesus compared himself to bread and spoke in parables to eat of his flesh and drink of his blood. So they did not believe. However, it says in John 16, verse 25, These things I have spoken to you in figurative language. An hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but will tell you plainly of the Father. When this word comes true, then you will understand the meaning of the words that Jesus Christ said in parable, that is, this age now. It's because of the another helper, the spirit of truth, whom Jesus Christ promised to send in his name, has already come in reality. The spirit of truth has been guiding into all the truth without speaking in parables anymore. Now, let us receive the voice of the Spirit of Truth about what eating and drinking means. Eating and drinking was already prophesied in the Old Testament. Turn to Isaiah 55, verse 1 to 3. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, that you may live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you according to the faithful mercies shown to David. It says that eating and drinking each receiving the everlasting covenant into your heart and carrying it out. Eating what is good and delighting in abundance. This is fulfilled when you understand the mystery of the kingdom of God that he had hidden in the Bible. In other words, it is fulfilled when you understand the eternal gospel declared by the spirit of truth. It also says in Isaiah 65 verse 13, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, my servant will eat, but you will be hungry. Behold, my servant will drink, but you will be thirsty. Behold, my servant will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. Eating and drinking means the servant of God receiving the word of God into their hearts and believing and taking action. In terms of the Old Testament, the flesh and blood, the bread and wine that Jesus Christ spoke of is the everlasting covenant. Thus, it means eating and drinking the word of the living God. But it says that the people who belong to this world, the ordinary people who became priests, will be hungry for they cannot eat and thirsty for they cannot drink. This means that the people who belong to this world do not keep the word the commandment of God. Anyone who calls on God in Jesus' name with their lips but does not keep the word written in the Bible will not eat or drink. This word has come true for the Christian and Catholic churches around the world now. People stand on the holy pulpit and preach only Jesus with the Bible, but they are preaching lies different from the Bible, which does not profit the soul at all so they cannot eat or drink. More pitiful are the congregations who say amen to their sermons, serve in their churches, and make offerings for the what is not food. That is called idol worship. They think that they are faithful. They firmly believe that they will go to heaven when they die. They do not know what it means to be thirsty in your soul. That is why God has said that they are unreasoning and drunk with wine. Let us read Jeremiah 15, verse 15. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became for me a joy and a delight of my heart. For I have been called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Also through prophet Jeremiah, 
Eating and drinking means to receive the word of the living God. However, God says not anyone eats and drinks of the word of God. Only the humble eat and drink of the word of God. The arrogant cannot eat or drink. Psalm 22, verse 26 says, The afflicted will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart be forever. People will eat the word of the living God in God's appointed time. That was described in another way through Jesus Christ in Matthew 6, verse 25 to 26. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow, nor live, nor gather into bonds, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? A lot of Christians took this literally and interpreted it in their own way without knowing God's will. They called on Jesus and God with their lips and only prayed instead of working. So as a result, Many are lazy and incompetent. This word does not mean physically eating and clothing. And birds of the air do not mean just the birds that fly around in the sky. Luke 8 verse 5 says, The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air ate it up. Just as it is written here, Birds of the air means the people who act as the devil to block the word of God from being planted in people's heart. In verse 12, you can see more clearly who the birds of the air is. Those beside the road are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that they will not believe and be saved. Birds of the air are the devils who take away the word from people's hearts so that they will not be saved. These people are the leaders in the church. They only use Jesus' name and God's name. They claim to cast out demons and heal the sick in Jesus' name. They mutter by the blood of Jesus, and they lay their hands on people. They teach that the incoherent gibberish is a sign of receiving the Holy Spirit, and they coax people to pray in tongues. No matter how hard the devils on the perfect work in their ministry, in God's eyes, they could not deliver a single birth of truth to the congregation, nor did they let anyone be born again into the people of God. So God said that they do not live nor gather into barns. Such people's lives are completely futile, even if they, they work all their lives. So when the perfect comes, everything must be nullified, everything people thought they knew, and everything they thought they believed until now. It also says in Matthew 6, verse 30 to 31, You of little faith, do not worry then, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? Even though all of this was written down already, people took it literally and played in their own way. When you see the entire Bible as a whole, eating and drinking means keeping the word of God and obeying. Eating Jesus' flesh and drinking of his blood is to keep and obey the word of God spoken through Jesus. Then let us search the Bible and see what it means to be clothed. Do not worry about what to wear does not mean do not worry about what clothing to wear physically. Such thoughts are at the human level, and they have nothing to do with God. We must interpret the Bible with the Bible to know God's perfect will. Being closed means to keep the word that Jesus Christ said and carrying it out. Romans 13 verse 14 says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lust. Being clothed with Jesus Christ means not using Jesus' name for your own lust 
and making no provision for the flesh that has nothing to do with the truth written in the Bible. The men of the flesh are devoid of the spirit. They are mockers who follow after their own ungodly lusts. And Romans 8 verse 13 says, For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The reason you must make no provision for the flesh is because you will die if you live according to the flesh. And you cannot cross yourself with Jesus Christ. In order to put on Jesus Christ, you must, by the Spirit, put to death the deeds of the body. To do that, you must be led by the Spirit. The Spirit of God means the Spirit of truth who searches even the depths of God. Closing yourself with Jesus Christ means to receive the word of the new covenant, the eternal gospel proclaimed by the spirit of truth and obeying the word. That is why John 15 verse 26 says, When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. The spirit of truth, Reverend Okju Shin, has revealed the mystery of the word of the cross that was distorted for the past 2,000 years by revealing the truth that Jesus did not take away everyone's sin as he died on the cross. She has revealed the truth that Jesus showed himself as an example that by obeying the word, which was already prophesied in the Old Testament, you can come to eternal life and never physically die. That is why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The spirit of truth guides into all the truth by testifying about Jesus Christ and revealing why Jesus did not speak without a parable, why he spoke earthly things, and why he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, on the cross, so that the one husband, Jesus Christ, truly becomes the head for all believers. Only then are you close with Jesus Christ. Thus, one of the important missions that Jesus Christ has come to earth for is to be the mediator of the new covenant, the eternal gospel, which is declared by the spirit of truth. It also says in Galatians 3 verse 27, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. When the resurrected Christ appeared to the disciples, they did not recognize him. In their spiritual state, they were not clothed with Jesus Christ. They were without clothing, and they did not believe in Christ. In other words, they were not baptized into Christ. When the resurrected Christ explained to the disciples the things concerning himself in the Old Testament and all the scriptures, their hearts were burning within them. That was when they were finally baptized into Christ. That is called being clothed with Christ. As a result, the apostles took up their cross and became martyrs. However, even though the disciples were baptized in their hearts, when the resurrected Christ explained to them the things concerning himself in the Old Testament, everyone must understand that it was not the perfect baptism. That is because all of the disciples physically died. If they were baptized within the spirit perfectly, they should not have sinned, and they should not have physically died. The proof is Jesus told the disciples that he will die on the cross and be raised on the third day, but they did not believe. And even though Peter's heart was circumcised by the resurrected Jesus, he fell into hypocrisy about 20 years later and was rebuked through Apostle Paul. The proof was in Galatians 2 verse 11. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his faith because he stood condemned. This kind of spiritual state found in Jesus' disciples has continued for 2,000 years after the apostles died. People judged by appearance and thought of martyrdom as the greatest act of faith. So they wished to be like the apostles and named themselves and their church Peter, 
Paul and John. However, the apostles who wrote the New Testament recorded the words without knowing the meaning of what they were saying. Let us find the proof for this in the Bible. Let us look at what Apostle Paul wrote, since people consider him to be the most spiritual of the apostles. Turn to 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 5 to 6. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the steadfastness of Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from every brother who leads an unruly life and not according to the traditions which you received from us. Rule means an order to be set as an example, or the law of Moses. That is the basis of all Jewish life and customs. In other words, it is translated into things like law, custom, ordinary life, and example. Thus, unruly means disorderly life, and it translates to being lazy or disorderly. God wants to set right everything disorderly and make us be made again by the word of God, truly become proper dignified people and shining in the whole world. But Apostle Paul's word, according to the tradition which you receive from us, is a fatal mistake. How confident was he that he would say this? Tradition referred to the oral law that was codified into 613 commandments, compiled about AD 200 and became Mishnah, the second religious text of Judaism. Tradition is a custom, opinion, or belief that is passed down from the past. If you take this literally, it means do not receive anything other than what Apostle Paul himself preached. Do not receive anything other than what the Apostle preached back then. That is a fatal mistake. In contrast to what he said in 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 5 to 6, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 13, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thought with spiritual word. Why did he say, live according to the tradition which you received from us? and say elsewhere, combine spiritual thought with spiritual words. If you look at the entire Paul's epistles, he did not interpret spiritual thought with spiritual words. This has been proven by their fruits. Not one person who was taught by the apostle became a spiritual man, and everyone physically died. Also, Paul said in 1 Corinthians, 13 verse 9 to 10. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, when partial will be done away. And in Galatians 3 verse 22 to 23, he said, The scripture has imprisoned everything under sin. And in Romans 3 verse 10, he said, There is none righteous, not even one, which goes against everything else, he said. Apostle Paul wrote the scripture without knowing God's will hidden inside the word he recorded, which was the written word by the inspiration of God. Christians in the later generation think that Apostle Paul was the most spiritual in terms of back then. Literally, in Paul's epistle, he confidently says, keep away from every brother who does not live according to the tradition which you receive from us. This is the human level. That is why God said in Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declared the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You must know that you must not take the Bible literally at the human level then let us interpret spiritual thought with spiritual words and see what tradition means. Let us read Matthew 15, verse 1 to 10. Then some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. 
And he answered and said to them, Why do you yourself transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother. And he who speaks evil of father or mother is to be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever I have that would help you has been given to God. He is not to honor his father or his mother. And by this, you invalidated the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of man. After Jesus called the crowd to him, he said to them, Hear and understand. The elders in this verse mean the pastor of today. The truth is, they have invalidated the word of God with the tradition of the elders for 2,000 years. Whether you believe it or not, this is the truth. The same incident was written in Mark 7, verse 1 to 14. The tradition of man abolishes the word of God. Apostle Paul does not realize that he himself has made people follow tradition for 2,000 years. No one in the whole world knew. But this does not mean that the Bible text is wrong. The Bible is the truth. Even Paul, who was considered to be highly spiritual, did not know the word of God perfectly by discerning spiritual thoughts with spiritual words as it was written through himself. The reason was because it was not God's appointed time, and because the Spirit of truth who searches even the depths of God had not come yet. We can understand the Bible perfectly only when the time comes for the Spirit of truth to come in reality and guide us into all the truth without leaning to the right or the left to open all the mystery of the Bible hidden since before time began. That is why the more you take the Bible literally in the eyes of the man, and the more you preach with human knowledge, the more corrupt you become and perish. Colossians 2 verse 20 to 23 says, If you have died with Christ to the elementary principle of the world, why, as if you were living in the world, do you submit yourself to decrees, such as do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, which all refer to things destined to perish with use, in accordance with the commandments and teaching of men? These are matters which have, to be sure, the appearance of wisdom in self-made religions and self-abasement and severe treatment of the body, but are of no value against freshly indulgence. Jesus said in John 6, verse 51, I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. We can understand what this means perfectly only when the spirit of truth comes and proves spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. By seeing the entire Bible as a whole, so before that time, people took the Bible only literally and partially when preaching. As a result, they thought that the communion, which was only a regulation for the body, was eating Jesus' flesh and drinking his blood. Thus, now is the age when the perfect comes and the time to abolish all of these. The 21st century is the universal seventh day the day of the Lord, and the day of the Son of Man. Now is the time when the Spirit of Truth comes in reality. Only at this time the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, hidden since before time began, is open. Now we can truly eat of Jesus Christ fresh, drink of his blood, and be clothed with Jesus Christ by obeying the words that he said. Through the word of new covenant, proclaimed by the spirit of truth, with the sound wisdom of God. All partial knowledge 
and all partial property for 2,000 years must be done away. Hear what the Spirit of truth says to the churches. Let the whole earth be silent. Amen. Amen.